This is Africa News Tonight on The Voice of America. Hello, welcome to VO Africa. Thank you for joining us. I'm Douglas Mpuga, and here is what's coming up. Tanzania has taken important and meaningful steps, mm. and President Joe Biden and I applaud you. Thank you. You have been open to working with the political opposition. U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris has praise for reforms in Tanzania, and she visits with young entrepreneurs. We'll have more coverage on Harris's trip in the show, and Kenyan protests today are again marked by violence. All this and more coming up on African News Tonight. Working together, it is our shared goal to increase economic investment in Tanzania and strengthen our economic ties. Mm. I am pleased to announce a series of new initiatives. Mm. One, the Export-Import Bank will sign an MOU with Tanzania, Mm. which will facilitate up to $500 million in U.S. exports to Tanzania. Mm. Madam President, under your leadership, Tanzania has taken important and meaningful steps. Mm. And President Joe Biden and I applaud you. Thank you. You have been open to working with the political opposition. We have discussed that. Mm. You have lifted the ban on political party public rallies. Mm. You worked to improve the freedom of the press. Mm. That was U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris announcing new plans to boost trade and investment in Tanzania. She made the comments today at a briefing with Tanzania President Samia Sulu Hassan. Harris arrived in Tanzania yesterday. In addition to her meeting with the president, she also visited Technology Entrepreneur Hub. E.D. Ueso attended the media briefing President Samia Sulu Hassan and U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris gave today in Dar es Salaam. I reached him earlier for more details. People are excited here in Dar es Salaam. There has been a lot of uh, programs today. Uh, uh, Vice President started by uh, having a talk with uh, President Sabia uh, in the State House and then came out to speak to uh, journalists on what they have been discussed. And uh, Vice President uh, Kamala Harris explained that uh, They have been agreed uh, to partner uh, with Tanzania in sectors like infrastructure, transportation, digital technology, climate, and energy security projects. What else did they talk about in the press conference? During their press conferences, uh, Vice President Kamara Harris explained that uh, they have been uh, in discussion with uh, Tanzanian uh, to facilitate up to $500 million dollars uh, to finance uh, U.S. companies in export uh, goods and services to Tanzania. So this is mainly in sectors of infrastructure, transportation, and digital technology. Uh, also, he may, uh, she mentioned about uh, a new partnership in 5G technologies uh, because uh, they believe they want to ensure that communication sectors also grow up. And that's why they have launched this new uh, uh, partnership on 5G technology. Uh, also, uh, Vice President Kamara Harris mentioned that the U.S. government is supporting the, the collaboration of uh, the government of Tanzania and private sector partnership. And that's why they have been harmonizing the more uh, U.S. companies to come and invest in Africa. Uh, she gave an example of... Uh, a new uh, plan by Lives on Metals, who uh, want to open a new processing plant in Tanzania for uh, minerals uh, that goes into electric vehicle batteries. Uh, that project, as uh, she mentioned, that will be of benefit for the both sides, uh, uh, taking into account that they are encouraging the innovations and technologies in Africa and world uh, at large. Tanzania has been uh, praised for trying to get on the road to democracy. Was anything about good governance and democracy mentioned? Uh, on the issue of democracy, uh, Vice President uh, Kamara Harris comments Tanzanian President Samia Sulu Hassan. Uh, for example, she removed the ban of political rallies and uh, give now room to most of political parties to conduct their, their duties. Uh, and she said that 
if uh, this continues, means uh, Tanzania now is going to have, uh, is going to want uh, to be one of the uh, countries that uphold democracies, and that is good for the uh, development of the country and its people. What's on the program for the Vice President Kamala Harris? Mainly today, it's a, it, it was a busy day for her because uh, after uh, having a talk with uh, President Samia, she headed to a National Museum Center where she put uh, flowers or in remembrance of the people who lost their life during the U.S. Embassy bombing in 1998. And then she went to uh, visit Tanzanian Startup Association where uh, she met with the uh, upcoming entrepreneurs and uh, young people who are investing in, in, in digital work. That was Idi Uwesu. He spoke with me from Dar es Salaam. U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris Thursday met young Tanzanian entrepreneurs and innovators to discuss ways they can enhance their products and partner with U.S. companies. U.S. Mike Howe has more. Gibson Kawago, the founder of Waga, a Tanzanian company focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries, was among the young entrepreneurs who were able to engage the U.S. Vice President. Kawago says Harris was impressed by how youth in the East African nation are working together to address the challenges residents face. I was very impressed with the innovations that we have right here because we were innovators who were interconnected. So we had totally different startups, but during the conversation, she found out that so many startups, this startup is working with this startup, solving the same uh, different problems, but interconnected. Harris's office Thursday released a statement that announced U.S. plans to bolster trade with Tanzania. Kawago says the announcement will create opportunities for several entrepreneurs, including those registered with the Tanzania Startup Association, or TSA. It is good that the TSA has a uh, great connection with the USA. So, like right now, different opportunities that will be coming towards Tanzania will mostly land at the TSA then because they, the TSA knows all the innovators here. They know exactly what we do. So we are happy that our connection has been strengthened and now we can access different opportunities. Lillian Madeje, the founder of Niajiri Platform, a Tanzanian tech startup focused on helping graduates find employment, said Harris was impressed by their work. One of the key things that resonated with her is just um, what we're doing, which is more than just a CV, um, doing assessments, getting to understand the personality. And we spoke more around transferable skills. She linked us to um, you know, her talks with... Um, clean energy, climate change, and how hiring for that particular you know, sector um, is now that they're going more than just the technical skills to the transferable skills. And that's exactly what we're working on right now. Madeja said she's happy that Washington is investing in Africa's tech sector, which is the fastest growing on the continent. This particular space 10 years ago was not as vibrant as it is right now. So what is this telling me, her visit, and you know, just like the exposure that we're all getting in terms of a global landscape, is the fact that there is innovative minds and youth who are doing amazing things in the side of Africa. Madeja's sentiments were echoed by Zwena Farah, the co-founder of Sandbox Co-working Space, the organization that hosted Harris and the young entrepreneurs. So her contribution uh, in terms of how we can access or rather the opportunities that are being placed was an eye-opener for most of us. Although some of the startups that we're showcasing are startups that have uh, American investors. So for the others who are budding entrepreneurs and uh, putting their products out in market, that was a good conversation to have. Harris also met with Tanzanian President Samia Suluhu Hassan, who she hailed as a champion of democracy. The two officials discussed how to improve economic ties between their nations and strengthening democracy in the region. The U.S. Vice President leaves for Zambia Friday evening, where she'll wrap up her tour, which began in Ghana. Reporting for VOA Africa, I'm Mike Hove. Medical Teams International, a global humanitarian and health organization, has commended Vice President Kamala Harris for her visit to Tanzania. Medical Teams is grateful for the increased visibility. She will bring to some of the unique challenges and opportunities facing this nation. Dr. George Mwita, Medical Teams Country Code Director for Tanzania, tells me that a major challenge Medical Teams works to address is removing barriers to health care for refugees in Tanzania, many of whom arrive from the Democratic Republic of Congo. We are just excited that the, the Vice President is around. As an organization, 
We are proud because uh, we are an American organization and we have been in progress in terms of uh, supporting our people, especially in the refugee setting. Most importantly is the fact that uh, one of the organizations from the American people, BPRM, have been very, very supportive in the last five years that have given medical teams international to uh, close to 15 million US dollars to support activities that are related to the displaced people, which we find very, very important in terms of uh, uh, responding to sudden emergencies as well as uh, the long-term crisis. And therefore, for her to come around, we are proud that uh, he should be able to at least, apart from looking at the kind of um, economic activities that we are doing that can make uh, and other relationships, we are interested also to see that uh, uh, to say thank you because the American people have been working very seriously uh, and very, very closely to Tanzania with the Tanzania uh, group. What challenges uh, does Medical Team International face in Tanzania right now? Well, at the moment, as we are speaking, actually, we are responding to a crisis that there is a, an influx from the Democratic Republic of Congo due to the ongoing uh, conflict in, um, in North Kivu. Uh, there are a number of people, refugees, who are actually in Kigoma as we are speaking now. And this is, is unprecedented because it was not part of our contingency, bearing that uh, we were expecting maybe to have it, this happening uh, during the election period. Unfortunately, at the moment, we're talking about over 6,300 refugees who are at Kigoma. And what we are doing as an organization now, we are trying to do the medical screening and ensuring that uh, we are able to support with life-saving services to this particular group of people. We are at the moment seeing how we can have the same group remaining in Kigoma, but at the same time getting them moved to the refugee, uh, refugee camp. So um, we are working around the clock to ensure that all this is happening, and especially with the government talking about Mabag thief, we have been putting up some very pertinent strategies to ensure that this does not hit us. One thing that we are doing at the moment is that we are really trying to set up a mobile health clinic so that we are able to, to support uh, the refugees, but at the same time, we have prioritized uh, caring for the mental health of these people that we are serving by providing them with some group therapy as well as um, individual therapy, basically. How can donors or governments like the one in the United States do to help you, uh, support your work? As we are talking now, as I've already indicated, the issue here is that uh, we did not plan to have this. Already Tanzania and medical team specifically, we have actually we have been fighting reducing funding, especially in the refugee setting bearing in mind that uh, a number of donors have focused their efforts to the other areas like the Russia and the Ukraine issues and the other day on the Turkey Syria. So at the moment, we are actually uh, deficient of key medical supplies, net, infection net, we are, in, uh, we are looking for a medical staff who are able to, to support uh, at the moment. We are talking about already cases where the current refugees are not able to access actually the basic standard that we are supposed to be to giving to them. So in the event that we are looking for donors at the moment, uh, we need to see how we can get this kind of uh, financial support, but at the same time, any kind of uh, uh, in-kind support. For some of these patients who are coming have already some complications, and therefore they have to be taken uh, to, to, to other higher or tertiary Organization. So essentially, every week we are spending close to $7,000, and therefore, if this is likely to go beyond uh, maybe this month, we are already in a crisis, essentially. That was Dr. George Mwita, Medical Team's Country Director for Tanzania. He spoke with me from Dar es Salaam. You are listening to African News Tonight. I'm Douglas Simpuga in Washington. U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris travels to Zambia tomorrow to end her week-long African trip. Key on her agenda during the trip is a scheduled meeting with President Haikande Haishlema to discuss multilateral agreements and deepen ties between Washington and Lusaka. 
the visit comes as Zambia appears to be receiving a lot of attention from the U.S. Earlier this year, U.S. Secretary, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen visited. VOS Peter Klote reached Zambian Foreign Minister Stanley Kakubo via Microsoft Teams to hear what Zambians expect from the visit. Our expectations are extremely high. We're expecting that uh, there should be high pronunciations on the next level of our bilateral relations. There should be pronouncements in U.S. investments in our country. I think that is what the Zambian public, the Zambian youth, who are really the owners of this country are looking out for. What message is she bringing to, to our country? That's very important for us. For us, it means that if there's high level investments, more di foreign direct investment, that means that we can add value to our natural resources. It also means that the youths who voted our government in can, have, can be assured of, um, of jobs. We're also looking forward to pronouncements that from not only from the vice president, but also from the private sector players from the US that she's coming to Zambia. We are aware that she's coming with a wide spectrum, spectrum of uh, US investors. That was Zambia, Zambian Foreign Minister Stanley Kakubo. He will have more on this interview on tomorrow's show, and you can hear all of it on Netland Africa with Peter Kalote on Saturdays on Saturday and Sunday. Former Olympic runner Oscar Pistorius has applied for parole and is expected to attend a hearing on Friday that will determine if he can be released 10 years after killing his girlfriend, River Stankep. The AP reports her parents opposed his release and, and are allowed to address the parole board on his hearing. The 36-year-old Pistorius was sentenced 13 years and five months in prison for killing his girlfriend in 2013 by shooting her multiple times through a bathroom door in his home. He told the court he thought he was shooting an intruder. Pistorius made history as the first amputee runner to compete in the Olympics in 2012. He also captured several medals in the Paralympics. British officials have begun collecting information about vote buying and other anti-democratic practices and may impose visa bans and other sanctions against politicians who engaged in electoral fraud in Nigeria's 2023 election. Our reporter from Abuja takes a look at the implications of the sanction on Nigeria's democratic process. British authorities say the individuals who could face sanctions are those who engaged in violence and voter suppression in the governorship and state assembly elections on March 18th. The decision comes after the United States condemned the use of inflammatory language by some public and political figures. Constitutional lawyer May Nasiri Kogo Umar commended the British and U.S. actions, saying they could help bring stability to Nigerians' democratic process. It is a wake-up call on Nigerians to really see to the possibility of inflicting penalties on those that are undermining the democratic processes. I do really uh, appreciate the fact that they are coming here to help sanitize our democratic experiment because of the weakness on the side of the Nigerian legislation to really see to the enforcement. The British High Commission in Nigeria also said there were positives to take away from the elections, but it noted that violence and voter suppression were observed in many states, including Lagos, Enugu and Rivers. Some Nigerians have argued that the U.S. and Britain should not get involved in the country's electoral process because it's interfering in Nigerians' sovereignty. Others, however, say it is a diplomatic act of national interest. Obole Amedu Ode is a former Nigerian ambassador to Singapore and former spokesperson for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Ode calls sanctions symbolic but wonders how effective they would be. Our dear country is uh, experiencing a lot of strains and stresses. Uh, we don't know how much bandwidth we have in order to accommodate the amount of strain and stresses the political economic uh, structure of Nigeria is going through. What with the hiccups in the electoral processes, uh, protests here and there. If these two Western countries can help or can support Nigeria's democratic electoral processes to become better by way of sanction, very well. But I have my doubts. 
Ode said Nigerians will be interested in what criteria Britain and the U.S. use for applying sanctions on erring politicians. The British High Commission also held the commitment to democracy that many Nigerians demonstrated despite being faced with intimidation and hostility during the 2023 general elections. For VOA News from Abuja, Nigeria. Fresh opposition demonstrations in Kenya today were marked by violent clashes. Protesters threw stones at police. Many people support the protests but are expressing frustration at how they are affecting their communities. This is the third protest since last week. Opposition leader Ray Lodinga has called on his supporters to protest high living costs and alleged fraud in last year's election. Two protesters have died in clashes with police. The African Union and Kenyan religious leaders have called for calm. Odinga, who lost last year's presidential election, challenged Ruto's victory, but the Supreme Court upheld the result. Reporter Fred Omulo is in the city of Kisumu, and he has been speaking with the people there about the protests. Susan Wafala says she thinks the protests need to continue. For me, I feel uh, these processes are very legal. They are very okay because uh, the, uh, the country is going through a lot of uh, issues. The cost of living is so high. The taxes we are paying is too much. And yet we are, not, we are not seeing the results. So we feel we need to protest until and when we get the rights that we need, we deserve as a country. Uh, I think uh, the two parties should just uh, sit down and talk because this is getting out of hand. Gerard Omondi says he understands that people are angry about the economic problems, but he says he opposes the protests. It's very unfortunate today that uh, we had interruption in our lives, in our businesses, in our family, in our education sector. Uh, while I appreciate the fact that uh, uh, individuals are protected by the Constitution and have the right to to picket and to demonstrate and uh, and protest, I strongly believe that uh, this is uh, should be done rather within the confines of law and with also respecting uh, your neighbours' uh, uh, rights as well. Colin Zoguyu says he supports the protests because, like many Kenyans, he's affected by rising prices. 